Hey YouTube, Dawson Matter here with my review of the Gorilla Blast Sword from Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel. Probably one of the last Super Ninja Steel reviews I, I'm going to do because there's really nothing else to come out. I mean, we pretty much have seen everything that we know about. I doubt there's anything we don't know about, but who knows, but this is like 99% probably the last Zord in the line. Um, but yeah, we, we learned about this a while ago, I think even before we knew Bandai wasn't going to be doing Power Rangers toys anymore, and it, you know, it's one of those weird things because we hadn't gotten the Subsurfer Zord and stuff yet, but we have this non-show Zord, and I'm going to say right off the bat, I don't mind non-show Zords, I think it's kind of fun to see what they come up with. Loved the Super Mega Force ones because it was neat to see um, What If tributes, um, and I love the Dino Charge ones because it was cool because they used other ones from the Judenchi that weren't used. But these ones have been kind of weird. We got those Dino ones before because, sure, and then we have a Gorilla Zord because why not? Um, first of all, let me just cut real quick to show you how this works with the Ninja Steel Megazord. As you can see, it's got like the most comprehensive features with the Ninja Steel Megazord and the whole line in general. I'm just blown away by the versatility. Now, just in case the sarcasm doesn't get across, this does not work with it in really any way. Um, the closest it gets to working with anything in the Ninja Steel line is you're able to put the figure up here to ride. And he can hold on to this. And we super exciting. I use the Nick version to make it more exciting. But yeah, that's about it. Like, it can't do anything with it. Uh, the Dino Zords weren't much better. They basically just clamped onto the arms as is, but yeah. Um, but let's just talk about this real quick and then I'll get into some more ramblings. Uh, overall, I actually don't mind the design of it. I actually think it looks pretty cool. Um, and it kind of fits the, the you know, ninja vibe of it with the, the head sculpt and everything. It does look a little cheap in some places, especially here. But just thinking about it at the base design, I actually don't mind it. I think this looks pretty cool. The black with the sword of gold looks good. I think the blue face kind of stands out in like a unique way. Um, and then you got like golden flames here. This looks like just an oversized weird Lego, um, which is kind of strange. And then up, and then up here, like this, I think is because of the safety that this has to be this kind of weird lime green color. Um, I wish it was gold, like this color or whatever. I wish this gold was better, but I wish it matched that. I think it would look cooler. I think it has something to do with the safety again. Uh, these all have nerf bits, which we're going to be firing off here shortly. Um, there's really nothing too spectacular about the back. I mean, you can see where Ninja Steel could go on there. Um, there's gold right there, quote unquote gold. And when you get this, the legs are actually separate and you just have to attach them on. It's pretty simple. They're actually these two little um, plastic like flaps you have to plug in, which is kind of weird. But I guess it's just to, to save space because it's kind of like a wide Zord. Um, and then it comes in like a regular box. Like, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. But yeah, it doesn't look the absolute best and like the most quality. Er, listen to that. Um, but I do like the design of it in general. Like, I think it could be better, but I don't mind it. It is just kind of weird that we got this and no Subsurfer Zord, and it's like the last Zord that's releasing under Bandai of America is this one, like, one-off Gorilla Zord. Like, I would love to know the thought press process behind it and everything, and I don't know. Like, these type of things usually never make it in the show. The closest we got is, like, Spirit Rangers and Battleizers, but... Original Zords never make it. But yeah, I just want to say I, do, I don't mind the design. I think it could look better, but I actually kind of dig it. So its whole thing is it's like a motion-activated bit, sort of. Um, and you get some noises to go with that. Um, so we'll turn it on back here. It's supposed to make kind of like a warning noise when something walks by, like an ant noise. I don't think it, there's any other noise for that. I messed around with it quite a while and I couldn't find any other noise. And then there's a noise it'll make after 20 minutes of uh, saying it's going to sleep mode, but we're not sitting here for 20 minutes and it's not worth it, trust me. Uh, but turn it on back here. It takes three AAA batteries and it's basically activated by this bit here. And, um, so you can see it there, and I'm going to kind of trigger it, and there's also a surprise noise, which you guys may recognize. Okay, so yeah, you could hear that after you get the right amount of error noises or whatever, you know, those noises, thank you, you get the noise that is from the Zeonizer. It was the noise from the original Zeonizer when you press the morph button, and it's the legacy Zeonizer as a kind of waiting sound if you leave it on for too long. And it's actually, it took me a long time to get the right angle to get it to activate. It's actually super annoying. As you can see, it was like just standing there, and I actually was just 
letting it sit there and just kind of stood far back from it and even then I had to find the right distance and before I did the review I could like do this and it would do it perfectly but then as soon as I went to film it wouldn't. It's just one of those things where the technology just isn't quite there yet. But anyway its main feature is basically this cannon bit. So I mentioned that you have to put the legs on when you get this but you also have to put this little bit on. It just kind of slides in there. I don't know if you can see the T in here. You just kind of slide this in here um, and then you have to crank it so that it, for reasons I don't know just because that's how it works. And then you pull this back, and it's going to sort of count down to itself. Did I not do it the right way? Shmonly! There we go. So now it's going to count down to itself. And it... It attempts to fire all of them at once, which admittedly is pretty cool. I've only gotten it to ever fire four at once. Usually there's at least one straggler, but that's kind of neat. But we get it. But honestly, that's pretty much about the it for this thing. Overall, I think that the missile thing is actually pretty neat and fun, and I think kids would really get a kick out of it, just the way it works, the noises, the kind of fanfare around it, the almost automated ness of it to use a super technical term. I think the kids would like that. I think the motion feature is like a neat idea again that kids would like but I had a similar toy that was like an Omnitrix from Ben 10 where the technology just isn't quite there yet where it's kind of frustrating even for me and I just kind of wish they would wait on those things till the technology is better. But yeah overall I definitely don't think this is a must have for collectors unless you want to get absolutely everything. I could recommend it for kids as being kind of a fun zord honestly but it's just kind of hard to find like it's been spotted at Marshalls you can get it on Amazon but it's a little pricey on there last time I looked um, but it's just like one of those where it's not like you're going to be able to go into Target and find it to buy for your kid or whatever um, so like I said kids might like it but there's definitely better toys out there and we might as well all just wait for Hasbro but it, to be a little positive at the end I do like the design and I think it has some neat bits with the motion and the, the little blaster but it's just not quite there and yeah anyway I don't want to ramble on and just repeat myself for the last bit anyway until next time thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment subscribe and of course don't forget to climb the steps and ring that bell to get notifications for all my videos till next time Dawson Ryder signing out